Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com, and this is a week in charts. Obviously, I want to thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you have trouble finding the show, go to DaveLandry.com slash webinar. Register even if the show link is old, and as I add new shows in, you can attend live, ask questions about trading, anything you want, or your favorite stock picks or crypto picks. Can't imagine that there'll be any crypto picks, but uh, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So what are we talk about? Well, obviously current market conditions, I'll have a tremendous amount to say about that. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock and crypto picks. I was pretty excited about crypto last fall, as you guys know, because it was moving, but not much to do there lately. It's actually, a what's the word? It's actually work to go look for something in crypto now. So we're gonna focus on ways to make money while waiting on core trend trades. And it's a lot of follow-up on what we did last time we had a show. Um, I have an intraday VIX trading example, and I'll walk, I wanna walk you through some of that. And trading route days, if I could just figure out how to trade route days, you might, have, might not ever see my fat arse again, and I'll flesh that out as we talked about a few weeks back. And we have a couple of ogre examples using both stocks, using a underlying stock and options and then a, ten, uh, a market timing update with the tfm 10 percent system want to flesh out some of the stuff I talked about in my trading simplified show <clears throat> there's a disclaimer screen as you know you can lose money trading or as all the summing up all predictions are about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then all right let's talk about ogre hunting ogres in case you are not familiar with them or opening gap reversals so let's talk about ogre hunting. Ogres, if you're not familiar, are opening gap reversals. And one of you guys gave me that name. I forget who, but I'll try to remember. <laughs> and uh, an opening gap reversal, and you're, you're trying to capture that reversal in the direction of the trend. You're not trying to capture a trend change. You're looking for a pullback type of pattern, and then you're looking for a gap to play that pullback on an intraday basis. Now, sometimes you might get a head start on a swing trade by trading one of these. But tonight we're just gonna talk about just the day trade version of them. And one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately, not that I'm going anywhere, but just in case I get hit by a beer truck. <laughs> it's a friend of mine my age killed over not that long ago. It's like, oh crap, I guess we're getting old, you know? Uh, but in case I get hit by a beer truck, I want to explain the process of of doing things and and that's going to help you out a lot more than just say hey look i took this trade aren't you impressed so does everybody see the slides now because it's important yeah okay we're good okay so all i'm doing and i'm using finviz you could use stockjarts.com i believe uh i was talking with one of you guys uh, a couple days ago you said uh the TOS has something that you might be able to use. I just like Finvis. It's kind of quick and dirty. And they were asking me for my scans. It's like, well, really, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just looking for for shorting. I'm looking for a gap up of 5%. Over 200K for shorting, that probably should be really over 500K, maybe over a million. But I like to kind of see what's out there. Price over five. I'm going to show you one in just one second. That was around five, a little bit on the cheap side. But I want at least five dollars a share. And on the upside, same sort of thing, except this would be a gap down. And this is really all there is to it. I can copy the link uh, to you if you want. And the only thing is, you do need a more advanced. Um, uh, you need the elite, I believe, through Finviz to make this work. If you if you use the the regular version that has all the ads and all on it, uh, it there's a bit of a delay, so the ogres don't work right away. But you could certainly experiment with it and get used to it. And if you go to, on, the, on my website, there's a, a place in the middle of the screen toward the top. If you click on that, there's a link for Finviz. If you want to sign up for that, please use that link. Anyway, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to grab my opening gap reversal scan and show you what it produced on the 28th and walk you through these just real quick. So this one, was kind of sideways and all over the place, and then it gapped higher. Now, this is at toward the end of the day, so a lot of the movement has already started, or or after, certainly after the open. 
But with the opening gap reversals, we're not trying to capture the burning dog, which is something that's going straight down. And and I'm sorry, for for shorting, we don't want to try to short something that's going straight up. And for longs, we don't want to try to buy something that's going straight down unless it's possibly an index and in some cases an ETF. Anyway, this one does look pretty good. This is what we're looking for, uh, a nice trend lower follow that pullback, but that's an ETF. This one's kind of all over the place. It might also be an ETF. Gush looks pretty good, as you can see. Nice trend lower followed by a pullback, but of course that's an ETF. HTHT, HTHT would be what I call a burning dog, okay? It's making new highs. We don't want to short something that's that's going up. I know some of the more aggressive day traders will short the parabolics, but I think that's a, a recipe for disaster. This one here, kind of all over the place and sideways. This one just kind of fell out of bed. It went straight down, and then it went straight up. So there's nothing to trade there. This one kind of bottomed out. It looks like it's trying to go up. This one's all over the place. This one's making marginal new highs or multi-month highs, and has been going sideways. This one looks okay. I'm not really too excited about it. It has a bit of a, a double bottom look to it, but it's okay. And I thought this one looked pretty darn good. And I did a little research because it was up so much. And come to find out it's a buyout, which is a merger. And sometimes if a stock gets bought out, it just will gap up and just chop around, chop around. That's exactly what it did initially. And I kind of forgot about it. And to my surprise, when I checked it tonight, it would have actually been a pretty good trade. But I just felt like a buyout wasn't, was, was a type of news that's not really good to play an opening gap reversal. But I guess price is king. So if you have any thoughts on, on playing something that's like a buyout for an opening gap reversal, let me know. And I'll show you this one in just one second. Once again, sideways action, nothing to trade there. This one's kind of was bottoming out, had a gap higher. And it's also was kind of cheap on the cheap side. This one, burning dog straight up. This VG was okay and when i looked at my big charts i kind of liked the way wind looked so that's the one i ended up going with so let's take a look at that so longer term downtrend and you could see in more recent times it began to break down after making a little bit of a base and this is like the first pullback after a base breakout and then it gaps higher and the idea with these opening gap reversals is to capture this move back lower and hopefully it'll implode and take out the prior day's close. And then once that happens, just keep on keeping on. Now, I did go back and look at this OAS right before I went live. That was the buyout. And it turns out that would have been a pretty good trade. My concern was that it would just chop around and chop around and chop around. I suppose I could have put in an alarm on this, alert on this and then maybe get in and stop out at the high of the day. But it just, I have I was a little leery of it because it was a buyout. And again, let me know if that's something you'll trade on like an opening gap reversal basis. Now, when I was talking to one of you guys a few days ago, you asked me a lot of questions about how to enter on these things. And it's tricky. You can't say I'm going to wait 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour. You have to let them open and kind of get a feel for how they're working. And I was, I was going, I went on to tell them that, look, if you're trying to learn the core methodology, let's stick with the core methodology, get that down pat, become successful with that trend following moron stuff, longer term trend trading, swing trading, the intermediate term trading, the money management, the psychology, all of this stuff. And then once you're successful with that, then kind of venture into this intraday stuff as the opportunities present itself. And I, I always stop short of saying the word day trading because I think intraday trend trading is the way to go where you're trying to capture a trend and ride it all day long. And, and you gotta be a little careful because you can't get a little pregnant. And uh, I guess there's jokes I can make about that now, but uh, I better not. <laughs> but you can't get a little bit pregnant. You gotta be careful not to, to get sucked into the screen, kind of like the moth to the flame. But anyway, just a little bit on entries. We did have the gap higher, as you can see, nice little gap higher in this stock. 
And then it did sell off a little bit. It tried to rally and then it made this dip. The second dip, I found myself thinking, aha, let's let's go after this thing. And luckily it reversed fairly quickly. And what you do in a situation like this is say, okay, well, it dipped below the open and it dipped below this opening range, the first 30 minutes of trading, but it really didn't go that far below, okay? It just went down about 15 or 20 cents. So it's like, you wanna wait for a, a point to where it looks like the hook is in. And I often say that people say, well, what do you mean the hook is in? Well, it's like people are trapped on the wrong side of the market. The market will do what it has to do to fool the most amount of people, as I often say, which I got from Linda Rasky. And then it will often do the obvious in an unobvious way. Well, in this case, it's it's the kind of the obvious thing, but it's going to have a couple of fake outs to the upside first and cause a lot of pain. People who who forgot to buy the stock or wanted to buy the stock, all of a sudden it gets higher, they get excited, they rush in, the shorts are trying to fight them, and then it's a bit of a tug of war and, and it gets jerked around quite a bit. And then it's also market makers and stuff like that that helps to make this thing work. Anyway, in a case like this, when you're getting those little dips below the open, you need to be careful, obviously, and make sure you don't get sucked into that possible reverse one. I'm gonna show you one where I ended up entering late and I don't know why I got in so late. I wish I knew why. Maybe I was just waiting for confirmation, waiting, 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 and then finally I couldn't stand it anymore. But in this case, you could see, you know, I was like, oh, I breathe a sigh of relief, this thing began to take off. And I was like, okay. And I almost forgot about it. And I said, because I had a lot of other stuff going on. And I said, you know what, Dave, let's throw an alarm in on this one. And if it starts coming back in, let's go ahead and take this trade. Now, the other thing you do, by the way, is you can actually put in a hard order, okay? Maybe put a hard order down here somewhere, since, especially once it rallies up a couple of points, because if it comes all the way back in, it may have stalled out. Now, I don't know my exact thinking at this point, but the alert went off and I was, I ended up buying some options on it and ended up out doing some outright shorting. And it just looked like it was beginning to implode. And so I was kind of anticipating that it would continue to implode. A safer, somewhat safer entry would have been to maybe wait for this opening range to be taken out. Now, in some cases, you know, maybe you could front run it a little bit if it rallies up quite a bit. You don't want to wait for it to come all the way back in. But as a general statement, you want to let it take out that opening range. So just 200 shares in this particular case. And I think I did it again, had some options on it. And I never did hit my initial profit target. So I ended up just exiting 200 shares market on close. And those are trades down there. As you can see, I didn't set the world on fire with this, but it made $332, which is much better than a poke in the eye. I should put much better in there. And, you know, who's counting, but that's. Uh, it's about 80 grand a year if you could do that every year, every day. It's kind of hard to believe it's that much, but I think 100 is 25,000. So nothing to sneeze at. And, and then sometimes I'm guilty of um, trading not to lose, as I've talked about before, where it's like, ah, it's only 100 bucks. Who cares? Just sweep it under the rug. Well, 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there begins to add up after a while. 200 bucks a day is what, 50 grand a year? It's kind of amazing when you think about it. All right, the next one was NIO. And this one was in a longer term downtrend, as you can see, but then it kind of made a cup and handle look and bottom. This is one of my old friends, one of the old really aggressive, I think it might be a Chinese stock, but it's definitely um, one of those car or car battery stocks or car stocks, or there's some kind of buzz about it. But anyway, you can see it opened a gap down here and I was looking for a big pop higher, and I know I shouldn't say hope, but what I was hoping for was for it to take out the Friday's close and keep on keeping on, and it almost did that. Well, it did have the gap lower, and it did run down initially, and I wanted to grab a one-minute chart to show you what it did, and when you're all excited and you're seeing these things, you got to be careful not to get too caught up in that first little tick up or two, and you got to give it a little bit of room. You can see in this case, it began to implode a little bit. So you don't do anything until it turns around and starts going back up. 
And I don't know why, but for some reason I got in pretty late on this one. So again, like in a case like this, notice that it did pretty much go straight down on the open. You had the little blip up, which could have trapped you in, and then it sold off. And then that's another case where it kind of hooks up, and, and I guess, so to speak, it hit, puts the hook in, you know, not to mix the metaphors. Anyway, so I didn't get in until right here. And I think, I, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't write it down in my journal, but I think what happened was, I was so busy doing other things that it's really sort of take off. And I think I might've watched it open and float a little bit and kind of forgot about it. But I did get in there and set a trailing stop. And I think I was looking for one point and it actually stopped me out before it hit the initial profit target on half. And then when I went to exit the other half, it started to rally a little bit. So I held on to it and kept the stop in place and then exited market on close. Now I made $62 <laughs> on the trade, but it's better than a poke in the eye. And I guess the lesson here is uh, one, I was looking for too much on the trade. 75 cents probably could have got that out, squeezed that out of the trade. Um, but it was squirrely. It was kind of all over the place and it wasn't a route higher. And that's the ultimate goal is just a route higher or a route lower with these things but luckily it didn't turn into a loss i'll take the 62 bucks and that's uh 12 and a half grand a year 13 grand a year better than the poke in the eye right <laughs> i know that's fuzzy math and then i did play a little option trade on this and i didn't set the world on fire but i had 30 cents on the option or thereabouts which is 17 percent in one day so that's better than the poke in the eye too all right, any questions on the opening gap reversals? If you're a member of DaveLander.com, and, and a lot of you guys don't know this, so I'm gonna repeat it again. If you look at the Q&A, back when we used to do a lot of Q&A, and, and the reason we don't do them anymore, haven't done one in a while, is we, we've been able to cover, cover everything pretty much live in Facebook. But uh, I guess if you had a lot of time, go in and read the Facebook posts, but if you wanted to get more on those open, opening gap reversals, easy for me to say, then uh, if you look under the q and I did a lot of presentations on that just because I get a whole bunch of questions on something like the opening gap reversal. Now, it's outside of the core methodology, but there's a lot of things that kind of play off of the core methodology, such as the pullback and the trends on things of that nature. All right. Uh, I don't know how long ago, maybe a month or two ago, maybe a little bit longer, I started talking about the VIX, and I got pretty excited about it. To those who don't know me, in the mid to late 90s, or I think it was probably maybe maybe 1995, I did some work with Connors, I did some consulting with him, and I did some some programming. And in addition to the programming, the consulting part was I would take some of his ideas and try to figure out how to make them better. And I'd never heard of the VIX until I met Larry. Actually, I take that back. Uh, I read his uh, hedge fund secrets book or whatever, and he had a fixed VIX system in there where you know you would do something the VIX was above or below 15. Well, we haven't seen 15 in the VIX in a long, long time. And so he talked about reversion to the mean. So I started using a moving average because that's the mean, a moving average is the mean, right? and did a lot of research. Now the research I came up with was short-term trading. And when it works, it absolutely prints money. The problem is occasionally you get really, really whacked hard. And that's a problem with short-term trading in general. And that's why, not to beat a dead horse, but that's why I use the hybrid system where I looked to get a swing trade profit and then move my stop to break even when I hit my initial profit target, take off half the shares, and then begin to loosen that stop over time and then that's how we get to stay with a stock when we're fortunate enough doesn't happen every time otherwise you wouldn't see my fat ass again but every now and then we we get into one and we ride it out for a couple of years and i was talking to one of you guys earlier this week and you were having trouble you, you just can't watch profits evaporate and you were taking profits even before the initial profit target is hit and my suggestion was trade at a small account until you catch one or two or three of these big winners and you ride them out for 200%, 300%, 400%, or 600%, and 
and then you could see that in your account let's say you got a 100k account and you had like the arlp trade well you made 17 18 percent of the entire account just in that one trade and you just have to get the repetitions in until you can see that work but anyway i digress but i've kind of taken just the opposite approach with the vic stuff and the short term works really well and i went in and, and was looking at it and it just absolutely printed money over like a year or two and then i noticed that it blew up during the pandemic and probably before the pandemic it printed money for a while so you got to be really careful with this fix stuff but i got to thinking what would happen if we did some intraday vix trading and every now and then this thing could just make these tremendous moves like a 200 percent move in one day or five or six hundred percent the normal range and you could absolutely print money provided that you just are patient 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 and let me just explain this chart real quick it looks complex especially for me who normally just uses a blank chart but the vix is a little bit more complex instrument that's a 10-day simple moving average. That's the mean, okay? And then underneath it are the P's. In this case, I'm using cash, just so you can see what the VIX does and see what the P's do, okay? So you can see S&P rallies. Now, there's not always this relationship, but usually when the S&P rallies, the VIX comes off. A lot of people get confused because the VIX is not puts, the VIX is puts and calls and you're measuring the volatility of those guys. But in general, when the market sells off hard, the VIX shoots up, okay? If you were looking at a VIX of maybe like uh, wheat or some commodity or something where some blight could hit or some weather conditions or whatever, it would be skewed the opposite way because the, the scarcity of the commodity would cause the commodity to just melt up. And it's just the opposite of stocks, which they melt down when things begin to blow up anyway so that's the s p 500 just as a reference obviously the bar chart is the vix now what we have down below is the vix close and vix open as a percent away from the 10-day ema okay and back when I did the, the short-term systems with Connor, Connors, the, the, the CBR3 and CBR3 modified, that was me messing around with the moving average and looking for that reversion to the mean. And when I started messing around with this on an intraday basis a few months ago, I realized that the open was very relative not only was a close relative, like the prior day's close, but the open was very relative too, because you might have a gap down or a big gap up in the VIX, and it could cause it to get stretched intraday. So in this particular case, the open right here was more than 10% away from the simple moving average. And the idea is to catch that reversion to the mean move intraday, not wait around for a week or two or whatever. And, and and that kind of stuff can actually work, and that's a, but that kind of stuff like will work until it don't type of, it could be an anthill type of system. Now, you can see there's the S&P in the background. The VIX began to revert to its mean, and then the S&P sold off fairly hard a couple of days ago, as you know. Now, the bottom chart, if you go in and look at the quick clips I did on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash dave landry you'll notice that i did some research on capturing holy grail days now holy grail day is when a market starts at one end and ends at the other and a route day is what those two terms in general can be used interchangeably and my thinking there it's kind of like if a market's going to go from ten dollars to twenty dollars it's going to have to pass through 15 along the way right so I look to buy at B. In some cases, we look to literally buy at B, which is when it's making a new closing high and something like IPOs. And in the market timing, we're going to talk a little bit about the TFM 10% system in one second. But if a market's going to drop from A to B to C, or let me rephrase that, if it's going to drop from C, high levels, down to A, lose 50% of its value, 
it's going to start to lose 10 percent of its value before that happens so the same kind of logic is here we need to capture an expansion of range okay so what i'm comparing here is and i don't know if you can read the whole formula i'm just looking at the high minus the low relative to the 10-day average true range okay you can only trade off the the range that happens intraday you're not trading off the gap right because you're opening up a fresh position during the day so this indicator down here just tells you the percent of intraday move like how far has it moved intraday and you can see right here this is like 200 percent. so that's a wide range bar and if you look up at the top chart you can see a wide range bar up there and notice the prior day was a narrow range bar so it never really began to significantly move higher so if it's going to move 100 percent it'll move 50 percent first and one thing i was looking at in this research and believe me it's far from being done but occasionally you get that 600 percent relative to its average range move and obviously that starts with a with a 50 percent 100 percent and 200 percent and part of the research I was doing or have been doing a lot of is trying to figure out what makes it go from 100 on up. And, and, and can you just buy the VIX or, or other markets possibly too once they have exceeded that, that range, that threshold, so to speak. So I do try to watch this and make sure as a general statement, it's at least 50% range movement before I look to put on a trade. And in some cases like this trade that i took in the in the vix was the market was rolling over pretty hard it had pulled back to the 30 ema and so you had this big picture daily set up and it, all of a sudden it looked like it just felt like a route was developing to the downside and i know you got to be careful with the feelings but if if you have everything in your daily chart and the market is overbought and it's stalling at the 30 ema and it begins to sell off and it takes out the prior day's low and maybe the prior day was like a narrow range bar and then it starts expanding then you know you might have a potential route day in the works and you pay attention to that range and if that range begins to expand in the vix and especially in this case where it faked out a little bit to the downside then you know you might be getting that thrust back in the opposite, opposite direction and i was really hoping for a lot more than and what I got. And anyway, you see down here, narrow range bar. This is a narrow range bar up here, obviously. And so if you watch this intraday, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to trade on this day, but wait a minute, this is at 30% or whatever the number is. And it doesn't seem to be expanding much. So I might just want to sit on my hands. And then the next day, you can see it went straight up. It had a really serious expansion. So maybe there's a trade to be made here. And ideally, you want this thing to be stretched away from the 10 day simple moving average to play that reversion to the mean move now as i said a second ago it began to expand higher the market began to roll over and begin to, to the market itself if you take a look at like the spiders the range on the spiders using this little indicator below began to expand to 30 or 40 percent it's like aha this thing is looks like the spiders are rolling over maybe i'll short some e minis take at least a token position and then looks like this vix is beginning to revert back to the mean because it was 10 percent below the mean the thing to the thing to remember is the vix only matters when it matters and lately it seemed like it seems like it's been artificially low it seems like it should be higher than it is and I did see a tweet on that, and I clicked over to the website, and they just kind of gave you a teaser to why they thought it was, and you had to buy the premium content. It's like, you know what? I could just observe that it's it seems like it should be more than it is, but it's not. And so it only matters when it matters. But if this thing really starts to expand, you know, well, Dave, how do you know when it matters? Well, like yesterday, or when was this, two days ago, the market was rolling over the vix was starting to increase it seems like it was at relatively low levels especially given everything going on in the world so it's beginning to expand now i didn't know that it would just be a kind of a mediocre uh expansion to like 70 or 80 percent whatever it was i played it as if it was going to expand 100 percent or 200 percent anyway so this is what the trade looked like and again 
what I did was I waited for this range to expand a little bit. I didn't try to anticipate this going higher. I said, okay, the range is expanding. We made this opening range here. We shot up, we came in, we faked out a little bit early in the morning. And so it's okay, well, I'm gonna pick up a thousand shares and I'm gonna use a half a point trail and stop. And I'm gonna flip out 500 when I'm up a half a point. Now, a half a point is really tight in the UVXY, but I felt like we had some market direction unfolding. And I felt like if it came back in a half a point, then I would have failed in the trade. And that's why I was only looking for a half a point. Now, I was hoping, and you're always hoping, but in this case, because the market was beginning to tank, and it looks like we're, we had a route day underway, or certain, certainly the beginnings of it, and I remember writing in my journal that I was nervous because I felt so bearish, and I could just feel this route day coming on, and I wanted to be careful. But my hopes were that I could possibly squeeze out more than a half a point on this, but it was kind of taking this time and this rollover, so half a point's fine with me. You get the stop to break even and trail it, continue to trail it higher, and then exit 500 on the close. Now, this worked out okay. My ultimate goal here was to make five times this amount, have a huge expansion to the higher, have a huge route day down, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. And it turned out to be 495, which is what is that? 125 times 126. <laughs> Close enough for government work. So I, I, I don't know. It's fuzzy math. My wife's always making fun of me. But every now and then she asks me, what's that thing you do? Because she, she's trying to figure something out too. Like uh, the girls that for this, um, for one of her clients or whatever, you know, they always order their $7 lattes every day and have a $15 lunch. And uh, she's like, what's the thing you do? It's like annualize. And you annualize that out. It's a lot of money. It adds up. But 495, better than the poke in the eye. And I did it over more than one account. So I made a little bit on this. I'm not bragging. I'd like to have made a lot more, obviously. Now, a few weeks back, last time we did a show. Oh, by the way, probably not going to do a show next week because it's 4th of July. It's usually hard for me to put together a show. And I have other deadlines that have just zipped by my head. <laughs> so I need to catch up. Anyway, I, I, as I said a few weeks ago, if I had a little more patience, you might not see my fat ass a day again. And that's because this is relative to the route days. If you could just sit and wait and wait and wait and maybe wait for that pullback to the EMA until all the stars align, until you see this expansion, all those other things I talked about earlier and the, and the range expansion and the ETFs and everything else, then you might be able to do really well and just sit back and wait. Now, the problem is it really don't happen often enough, but if you are really, really patient, the problem is you get, a chew, you get chewed up in between, right? So if you could just wait and wait and wait, and it's kind of like the Jimmy Rogers money line in the corner thing, wait until there's a money line in the corner, wait until there's money line in the corner, then walk over there and pick it up. But you could see in the S&P 500, we obviously we're in a downtrend, and it looks like that downtrend was somewhat accelerated, and we, rallied up to the 30 EMA, and then we imploded from there. And we had that nice little route day lower on the 28th. And this is what the P's look like. And what's kind of fascinating is, and I know you want to party with me, but what I have here is I just drew in two bar highs. And it didn't make a two bar high until midday. And then it wasn't that impressive. It wasn't like you had to sell off like this and then it took out this high, okay? It just sort of consolidated a little bit. It largely broke out past the prior two bar highs and then it rolled back over. And unless I didn't squint my eyes strong enough, it looks like it never made a two bar high for the rest of the day. So once you kind of get hold on and get a position on and you give it a, a little bit rum, and it, as it was more and more in your favor, you might want to even give it more rum, especially if you hit that IPT. And that's sort of what I was hitting at with that VIX trade was like, I'm going to be happy with a half a point, although I would like to squeeze a little more on initial profit target. But if I get a half a point, I'm fine with that. And if that thing really starts to move, I'm going for the real money. I'm going for that 600% relative move to the 10-day ATR. 
and I'm going to open up that to one point, maybe even two points or three points if it goes crazy and runs, let's say it runs 10 points, I would open it up that up to two or three points, like I said, and I'm going to trail that all day long to see how long I can stay with the position. Now, I pulled up some ETFs and the SARC fund, and you can see that the ETFs had really good runs higher. Uh, the SOC did correct a little bit, but it did run the rest of the day. And if memory serves, I think I got knocked out on this correction. I might have tried to take a stab to get back in, and it got stopped out again, but it was a very minor second low type of trade, and it was very minor loss compared to the gains of the day. I figured it was worth a stab to get back in. And the SARC one, now I took I took all three of these except for the SARC. And my reasoning was I already had enough on and I wasn't sure if these were going to work, okay, obviously. And after I decided that, okay, they're all working, looking pretty good, the SARC had already made a pretty big move and I figured it was probably a little too late. And the other thing, because you might be thinking, but Dave, I thought you were excited about the expansion range. It's like, well, I am. But I got to thinking that my correlation to the S&P 500 is probably close to 100% or a very positive correlation. So if the market began to rally, especially with like LabD and SOX S, those two, two ETFs would begin to implode. So what I'm trying to say, long story endless, is, is I decided not to get greedy. Now, I'm not always that way, but I said, you know what, Dave, you've gotten chewed up quite a bit here. Let's just ride this thing out and not get too greedy. But you can see that the SARC fund would have been a, a great uh, investment, so to speak, an intraday investment. Hey, I might start calling it that, intraday investing. I like that. Write that down. So I didn't play that one, but play these other three. All right, uh, in my stock chart show, I do a mystery chart. And it's basically, and usually, I'd say 99% of the time, comes straight from a trading service. And you can see it bow tied down. And if you're not familiar with the bow tie, we're just looking at a 10 SMA, a 20 EMA, and a 30 EMA. You're looking for them to cross over fairly quickly at what I call a fulcrum point. To, to, it gives the appearance of a bow tie. And that suggests that the trend has changed. And this is AR. Now, this chart's a couple of days old. And it actually rallied up a little bit further. My entry 31, I think the entry was 31.90. We bumped that entry up a little bit because it pulled back a little further. With the bow tie, like technically the bow tie would be on this day here. This is a higher low. That's an aggressive entry with the bow tie. Ideally, you want a higher high and a higher low. So this was the bow tie. And then it, as it continues to pull back, you just kind of bump your entry slowly up. You give it enough wiggle room to try not to get trigger on noise alone. So 3190 and it actually triggered today. And that was the original parameters there. And if you look at the service archives, which I'll update soon, you'll, you'll be able to see that trade in the trigger and everything else. All right, I, I talked a little bit about this yesterday in my Trading Simplified show, but I, I just want to kind of touch upon it quickly. The TFM 10% system gave us a sell signal. The sell rules are close 10% or more away from the 50-week closing high and close below the 50-week moving average. And as I talked about earlier, my thinking there is if a market to drop 50%, it's going to drop 10% first. I wouldn't rush out and try to use this in a biotech or semiconductor or something like that unless you adjust your parameters. But for the S&P 500, 10% is a pretty good round number. And that 50-week moving average is a good little average to look at too. And knock on wood, and no guarantees, but this little system would have got you out of every bear market in history, including the crash of 1987. Because the market usually doesn't, well, it doesn't, you know, never say never, but everybody thinks the market crashes. And when it does crash, you're like, hey, look, it's crashed. But the market takes a long time before it actually crashes. And I learned from Greg Morris, tops are actually more often than not a process. And bottoms, believe it or not, are more often than not an event. So even in this case here, 
it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve weeks before we had a sell signal off of the highs. And I did a presentation a while back, and I said, "You have time, but you don't have unlimited time." And then obviously this is sort of playing out to the downside. So a close below the buy line, which is 10% below the 50-week moving average. I'm sorry, 50-week closing high, which would be right there, okay? And that's just, just simple math, 10% below here. Now, we had another sell signal here not that long ago, back in April, because same thing, close below the buy line, close below the 50-week the moving average. I didn't recognize the sell signal, but one of you guys in the group pointed it out. I'm sorry, buy signal. And uh, the I didn't notice that the low was actually above the moving average. And as I've said before, the designer's intent was to buy on strength and sell on weakness. And that's my general mantra when it comes to markets. I it, Again, not to last week at Dan Camp, but I was talking with one of you guys earlier this week. And you're a reversion or a prior reversion to the mean trader. And you're used to catching that falling knife, or at least attempting to. And it's very hard for you to wait for that stock to rally significantly before getting in. But that's what I do as a trend follower. I wait for that confirmation to suggest that the trend might be returning. Or resuming. Anyway, so there was a buy in between. I didn't, I didn't call it a buy signal, although I tracked it mechanically once I recognized that. I didn't make any adjustments in anything based on the buy and somebody was, um, I don't know if they were complaining and they were like, well, why didn't you take it? And I'm like, well, because I didn't, I didn't really notice it. it. It looked weak to me still. And, uh, but I said, that's okay that you took it. If you're following something mechanically, then so what? It's a whipsaw and you really didn't lose a whole lot of money by buying back in and then getting back out. And the thing to realize is, I had this measured somewhere. Maybe I have it measured in another chart. But from that last sell signal, that was a significant drop. Oh, there it is. So let's say you lost a few percent by getting in and out. Well, you just saved 15% by getting out again from that second sell signal. So the system just paid for itself again. And, and the other thing, too, is think about designer's intent when you're following a system. The designer's intent for this system was to avoid the occasional diaper change moment. In other words, the market losing 20, 30, 40, or 50%, or maybe even 80%, you know, it could happen. Don't believe me, look at the charts, you know? <laughs> My friend, you know, I got a sell signal, I told him way back here, you know? <laughs> It's like, uh, oh, I talked to my guy, and uh, I said, well, what did he say? He says he's getting more aggressive, and I rolled my eyes, like I said a hundred times already. And then last time I saw him, uh, he started talking markets, and he says, well, what's the worst can happen? I said, you lose half your money. It takes 25 years to get it back. The the buy and hold or buy and hope Kool Aid type of people, they they just don't understand that. They they get their little script and they go out and just say, you got to hold on. And, um, you know, God bless them. Anyway, you can see that's that's 10% below that close, as I was saying earlier. And that's the sell line, okay, or buy line. I guess it's also the sell line, now that I'm thinking about it. Now, the great thing about this stupid little system is that it got you out right before that serious pandemic slide. and What's interesting is the weekly, this is a weekly system. And I, I designed it to be this longer term trend following system. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And it's a TFM stands for trend following moron. To just to see if something super, super simple could work. And, and it's actually become part of what I do and part of, a big part of my analysis. I was kind of I'm shocked at how well it works. It does have some nuances though. And one thing I was thinking about is that if you have a V-shaped recovery, it's not gonna get you back in until you get close back, all the way back to that, within 10% of that 52 week high. So here's your signal here. And the buys are a little bit more, um, what's the word, complex, or uh, we're looking for a little bit more confirmation. You need two lows greater than the moving average. That's the 
230 EMA breakout system or 220 EMA breakout system. And you can Google that and, or you can uh, look at my YouTube channel and, um, and see a lot of videos on that. So that's kind of where that thinking comes from. But just in case the market tries a rally and comes back in, like it did a few times here, you're not going to get long prematurely. I mean, no guarantees, but obviously, <laughs> George just realized that's the uh, TFM stands for trend falling moron. Yeah. Anyway, so you could you argue that this was a whipsaw, but again, designer's intent was to get you out of the way, and it dropped twenty eight percent. So round numbers, that's 30%. You lost 30, you would have lost 30% of your money. Now I know it all came back, but I guarantee you hanging on will work until it don't. And as I said in nauseam, I had a lot of friends and family, and they were hurting pups when it was down so sharply. And you know, all you have to do is if the market starts looking a little questionable and you're down about 10% in your portfolio. Call Big Dave and, and you know, not that the Grand Poobah, but I could show you some things statistically to let you know that you could get hurt and can get hurt really bad. And I know one one of my friends held through it and now he's out of the market in real estate or something and he just gave up on the market. So this this bad experience here has, has got him out of the market probably at some inopportune time and he probably missed the last huge run up that we had. But anyway, the thing I was thinking about a week or two ago is that it's going to take 52 weeks for this buy line to start to drop. Now, in 2008, you could see we had that longer term bear market. The buy line did begin to drop because your 52 week high is back here. It's way up here. But then as the market drops further and further and further, looking back 52 weeks, then it's right here and then it becomes right here so it's got a tremendous amount of lag to it which can be slow to get you back in unless of course you get a longer term downtrend like this and that's okay uh again the system was designed to 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 get you out of the market and of course you have to have a buy side parameter just to, to get you back in obviously but there are other ways to get back in the market too and but if you do have this signal along with some other things then by all means, you should be getting back in the market. All right, we can look at crypto. I don't think there's really anything to, to glean from that. Let me just talk about Facebook group real quick. I do have a Facebook group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders. You have to be a gold member of DaveLandry.com, not a free member. And that keeps Riff Raff out. I'm kind of half kidding. Or a member of the service which in more recent times, I've given gold away with the service membership. But I occasionally throw out some trades there, as you guys know, I think I talked about the NIO. I don't know if I threw out the win-win, um, but I will uh, on occasion throw out some trades as I see them. And we get to talk to each other. And it's kind of it's kind of cool to watch. I'm very proud of a lot of you other guys uh, in there. You're, um, like you talked recently about not taking a lot of trades and, and it's like, you know, you guys get it. The market has been really crappy and you haven't been taking a lot of trades and that's just fantastic. So let me get this shared real quick. We'll take a quick look at crypto. Easy for me to say. Uh, let's see this one. Nope. Here we go. So there's the FinViz once again. And this link here, I could share this link if you like, but basically you just come down here and punch these parameters in. So let's take a look at crypto real quick. And as I said a few weeks back, when I said say hello to my little friend, the 30 EMA, pretty amazing thing, that 30. I know you want to party with me, but that silly little moving average can, and can be the keyword in this in that sentence help to keep it on the right side of the market. So here's Bitcoin. We were at 43,000, 44,000 round numbers before it broke down below the 30 EMA and it never got really above it or never closed above it even. You had Landry light the whole way down or most of the way down, meaning that the highs are less than the moving average. And now it's $20,000, okay? 
So you're like, hey, I want to buy some Bitcoins. One of my one of my friends asked me a couple of days ago, hey, what about crypto? Should I buy some crypto now? And I said, well, you should only buy Bitcoin if you're thinking about something longer term. Shitcoins, if you want to trade them, shitcoins are fun to trade, and you can print money when when the market's moving. And will we ever get that bull market back? I don't know. Uh, yes, yes, would be the the definitive answer, but the question is when. But if you didn't know anything about the markets, the 30 EMA will keep you out of a lot of trouble. And you can see just as you go through these, just pay attention to the 30 EMA and then make sure you, you might wanna make sure you have a little Landry light above. Ethereum has been weakened in Bitcoin, as you can see, this is Ethereum over Bitcoin, Landry light all the way down there. And what is this? This is Ethereum versus a dollar. Look at the amount of Landry light. Huh? It's huge, right? Okay, so just a 30 EMA. I mean, write this down. Shoot. 3,000, 3,200 round numbers. Okay, 3,200 and then 1,000. Let's just do that math. 1,000. Uh, 3,200 minus 1,000. Divided by 3,200 equals. Okay, that's a 70% drop. Okay, you know. So if you want to buy some Ethereum, wait for it to go back above the 30. Okay, <laughs> just for rest of geez, let's take a look at some of these stronger ones in here and see what's going on. Let's see that kind of shot straight up. That looks a little thin. So some of these uh, SHYT shit coins are waking up a little here and there, but. I really hadn't had had enough energy to go in and look at them all and and try to trade them uh, last fall as I was kind of going crazy and you could see me in here on Saturdays <laughs> doing little uh quick videos on this stuff it was just absolutely amazing well we're no longer in that bull market and these shit coins SHYT or truly shit coins now anyway so you can see lots and lots of stuff this one looks like it's trying to bottom out a little bit but again, I, I wouldn't even think about buying this until it's above its 30. Boy, I remember this thing when it was, look, so you see some, these are some of my buys last fall. Look at that. You know, I was going straight up and I bought it and where to go? You know, it doubled from there. But again, the 30, your best friend. All right, let's shift gears. Let's go to stocks. And uh, you guys want to ask about individual stocks. If you have any crypto, bring it up. I'll be happy to look at it. But it's just it's died out you know it's like well, i i believe in the church of what's happening now <laughs> here's that oas that's that buyout thing we were talking about but look at that implosion from that nice little opening gap reversal ar was in the service this was the one that was that mystery chart i just showed and you can see it triggered today 3190 was the trigger it hasn't set the world on fire just yet but it looks like a stock that's in a lot of trouble. It's got a long ways to go. Let me just rush through the market here or just go through it quickly. I don't think there's a lot to, to get into. Let's throw that 30 back in here just for SNGs. <laughs> Mars with the meme with uh, <laughs> Kamala and uh, what's her name? Amber Heard. And the title was SNG. That's funny. All right. Anyway, there's the 30 EMA. As I was saying earlier, S&P 500 went up, tagged it, rolled back over, and it kind of did the same time, same thing last time. Although it kind of was uh, trickery, 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 and then it finally broke down. And way back here, I wasn't getting too excited about the market. I felt like, okay, we're within five percent or whatever number number was of the old highs i could i could give up five percent move if this thing's going to double or triple let's say go up another 200 percent i could give up that first five percent plus i wasn't seeing any stocks to speak of and here's the other thing too the methodology requires a pullback so i'm not going to see any stocks to buy on this day and maybe on this day or this day or, or certainly back here maybe i'll start seeing some longs but i'm going to wait for an entry and then what happens it just keeps rolling back over so that's the S&P 500. Again, your 30, the 30 is your best friend. There's a NASDAQ, kind of chopped around today all over the place, but still in a down, what, uh, percent and a third. 
it too went up, tagged at 30, kept on going down, downtrend, 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 rusty, remaining in a downtrend. Look at that 30, it's huge. <laughs> now, energies, uh, energies have bow tied, and my bow tie chart, it seems to be, there it is. You can see energies bow tied to the downside. They also made what, what I call a first thrust. So energy is not looking so hot in here. Take a look at financials, longer term downtrend intact. Use that 30 as a reference. Insurance, real estate, the list goes on and on and on. Now, biotech's been trying to bottom out, but I wouldn't get too excited just yet. Something like a like biotech or any other uh, sector for that matter, I'd like to see them go down and, and reach like multi-year lows, but they have been trying to bottom out a little bit in here as of late. On a relative strength basis, certainly a stronger sector. Health services, back to the downside. Transports are getting whacked in here. Let's take a look at transports. Kind of a choppy downtrend, but for the most part, hugging that 30 all the way down. Semiconductors, been pretty ugly in here. And on a relative strength basis, is one of the weaker areas next to retail, I think. But you can see downtrend, downtrend, downtrend. So no need to rush out and buy any stocks. The energy is with the last of Mohicans. And the reason I'm bearish on the in, 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 energies now, easy for me to say, is that they were at such high levels that they got, a, they got ahead of themselves. And now they're beginning to implode. And I know the world news and all would suggest you should be buying energies. But I think that run is done and as you probably know stronger areas when they eventually fizzle out will become the weaky areas like i said i think i said a thousand times i, I one of my early trips to italy it might have been 2007 or 8 or whatever and uh that's when oil had ran 100 bucks a barrel the first time and they were giving out awards and and all these guys would would go up there and they'd say they're you know, thank you so much in Italian speech, you know, um, anyway. And there was like six energy guys. They got all these big awards and everything for, for making 100% that year or whatever. <laughs> and I think it, I think it was John Bowler who was sitting across from me. And I'm like, uh, I don't think we'll see any of these guys next year. <laughs> you know, not to be shot on Friday, but, you know, right place at the right time. And, uh, you know, trend volume more on stuff, though, too. I mean, they're, they're forced to buy energies. But... If you're a trend following moron, you know, we rode these energies up. We still have a coal stock in the portfolio. And uh, now we're going to ride them down. But uh, anyway, before I forget, I want to show you retail. Retail banged out new lows with a little bit of vigor. Certainly one of the weaker areas in the relative strength basis, but just look at ugly in here. And again, you know, your best friend at 30 day EMA. All right, any, any stocks you guys want to look at? Going once, going twice. Got a quiet bunch tonight. So if you're if you've never attended these shows, come to the show. If you got a stock you, you want me to look at, let me know. Ideally, I wanna you want me to my highest and best use would be something that's trending, ideally a pullback. So there's a, a trend following type of stock you want me to take a look at. Feel free to come to the live shows and bring them up. If you can't make the show, you can always email me and I can cover the show and you can watch the recording, which usually goes out. Friday morning. Okay. All right. Going once, going twice. All right. That's it. Thanks everybody for coming. I uh, for showing up tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, you can shoot me an email at daviddavelandry.com. I'll see. I think everybody here, or most everybody here tomorrow and Facebook. Everybody else have happy Fourth of July, and I'll see you uh, next show. Thank you so much.